welcome to the Pear Blossom Press YouTube channel. My name is Lynn or LV Handcrafted here on YouTube and today I am going to make some Christmas lights. I don't know about you but my Christmas lights are already up so let me know in the comments below if as soon as Thanksgiving is over, thus begins Christmas in your household, or do you give yourself a little bit of a breather between holidays? I am curious to know. Today I am making a 5x7 card, and I have this new stamp and die set that I just picked up during Black Friday. This must be a record for me because so often I buy things from some outrageously steeply discounted sales during Black Friday and it takes me forever to bring them out of my stash and actually use but I did pick up this set because it's got some fabulous lights and a lot of them are those Einstein style lights which I think are really fun and in particular these look a little bit like Christmas lights but they are really cute because the little filament that um, is inside the light bulb, it's twisted in the shape of a heart, which I think is really darling. So what I have done here is cut two panels of 5x7 black solid color cardstock. I am using a, just a bit of washi tape to hold them together and the Stampin' die set comes with a coordinating die to cut out the stamped image of the light bulb. I went ahead and outlined where I want to position the string of lights that I'll be creating and I die cut that multiple times through both layers of cardstock. And you may not necessarily need two layers just depending on your cardstock and usually black cardstock isn't too much of an issue but on lighter cardstock a lot of times with just the single layer what will happen is when you light up or turn on the lights it creates shadows underneath that uh, top layer of cardstock and then you can kind of see all the inner workings like the foam that you have behind that panel. So I've just gotten into this habit of always backing my panel with some black cardstock. Even though I am making a card that is going to start off with a black panel, I still cut myself a second black cardstock. And what I'll do is um, I'm using some stays on ink, which is a lovely, uh, it's very, very pigmented, very um, juicy. These ink pads are very new to me. And they have them in so many different colors. I've only had black in the past, but I didn't realize there were so many different colors. So I've got a few in some Christmas colors and a really lovely uh, peacock blue, which is beautiful. And stays on inks are wonderful because they are a solvent solvent based ink which makes them perfect for stamping onto non-porous surfaces like acetate. So I've stamped directly onto the acetate panel that will go behind this black cardstock panel and before I get too far I want to make sure that I have everything that I need to have done to this panel before I start putting foam behind it. So while everything is still flat I wanted to make sure that I stamped the word press. Uh, so often I forget about that. I did also draw in some strings that these lights are going to be hanging from. I'm just doing a little casual freehand drawing and it's with this, um, it's with the deco color. It's called uh, Liquid Silver. It's by uh, Marvy and it's an opaque paint marker and I have it in extra fine so really really wonderful for marking onto dark or black cardstock like I am. I stamped with Versamark ink the word press which is from the Pear Blossom Press Action stamp and die set and I'm going to white heat emboss that. 
So I should have, I always forget this, I should have used some of the anti-static powder because I did get quite, quite a bit of that embossing powder clinging. Um, and sometimes you can sort of flick from the back and that would knock off a lot of those um, stray embossing um, powder granules. But sometimes you just need to take a little paintbrush to it and wipe them off. You can avoid a lot of that if you actually just do a quick little brush of your anti-static powder and then nothing will stick to it except for where you've got that first mark sticky ink. Um, part of what makes it stink stick is static, but then also sometimes the oils and whatnot from your fingertips or if you use lotions, sometimes that can actually make the cardstock um, hold on to that powder. But I've got that set and as well I am going to attach my sentiment too. So everything everything that needs to happen pretty much to this card while it's flat, while I can still burnish it, is going to happen um, and then I can really start to put everything together. Firstly, I am going to attach the acetate that I stamped onto with just some plain old double-sided tape, adhesive tape. I'm gonna be sure to burnish that really well and then I'm gonna attach to the back of that the second layer of black cardstock. Now, the reason why I saved this to now is because just in case I messed up the front of my card, <laughs> In any way, I would have this backup so I could have always, if something went wrong with the um, drawing of the silver lines or the heat embossing of the WordPress, I at least still had that backup. I could have just glued that to the top of this one and then um, continued on. But thankfully, uh, everything went okay the first time around, so I didn't need that backup. But I'm still attaching it because it's going to help to sort of block out um, any shadows and that way the inner workings of the lights will get uh, hidden essentially even when the lights are turned on. So flipping to the back side, so now we're looking at the back side and I'm going to start to plan which lights I want to actually have light up. I'm going to use the easy lights and the easy lights have three light bulbs attached to them and everything is already wired completely to the battery holder when you buy a set of these easy lights and you can get them in different um, quantities. You can get a three pack, a five pack, I think even a 20 pack and so it becomes, if you know you're going to love making light up cards, it's definitely more cost effective if you buy them in larger bundles because trust me, you're going to be addicted to making light up cards, especially I feel for the holidays. It's well worth that extra little um, interactive fun because I think those are the cards that become a little bit more memorable at a time when people are getting a lot of cards. So I always like to have my holiday cards stand out in some way. And I think lights are a fabulous way to make a very memorable experience in your card giving. So there are five lights on my card here, but the easy lights only have three light bulbs. So initially I was going to make the top three lights uh, be the ones that had, uh, or the, I should say the top three like apertures be the ones that were lit up. But then I decided that um, it might make the card look a little bit um unbalanced to have all of the light at the top. So I moved one of the lights towards the bottom. It's the one it's a wonderful thing about the the easy lights the fact that the wires are they're very thin. They're pretty long. This is a 5x7 card, so I I really can move them anywhere I need to move them and all I'm doing is tacking the wires down with a little bit of just plain old scotch tape just to hold them down in place while I um, do 
little test runs so I do like to turn the lights on make sure I like how it's looking and if I need to adjust anything I still can because that scotch tape isn't going to really tear anything up if I do need to lift um, things a little bit. I decided kind of last minute that I do want a little bit of my card base to show. I want a little bit of that white border all the way around. So I, I would not necessarily advise anyone to do this, but if you are going to trim your panel with your lights already attached to it, just be sure you're not cutting through any of your wires. Um, it should be easy enough to do because I think for the most part, you'll probably want to keep your wires more towards the center of your card and not not out towards the borders but just be just be careful um, and maybe push the the wires a little bit to the side so that you don't accidentally trim anything off or cut into any wires but speaking of cutting into wires these are um, wired up so that they are um, basically in parallel with each other so that means that if you did snip one off the other two would still they would still operate. So if you only needed two lights out of the three to light up, you could definitely alter that and snip the lead wires to one of the lights if you did want to do that. But I always figure, you know, the more lights the better. So I'm using all three and I've got everything taped down to where I um, want it and I actually have the wires they're gonna be slightly visible because I have the wires going all the way to um, basically where the filament is um, in the in the stamped image so it's kind of it almost kind of looks like it is the um, uh, like how a light bulb would function so then the next thing that I need to do now that everything looks the way that I want it to look is to add the foam on the back here. So I'm using Pear Blossom Press's world best foam and it really is. I, um, I had a thought, I, I'm going to mention this to Amanda. I, I wonder if she would be willing to make this in black because it would be wonderful to have black foam since my card base or not my card base my card base is white but the card the top panel is black and I feel like then the foam kind of um, doesn't take anything away from the black if you were to kind of tilt it and and catch a glimpse of that foam from the edge so I'm gonna float that idea by Amanda but let me know what you think about that in the comments below maybe maybe if we all comment um, we can get that to happen so the um, the only trick to putting your foam is to make sure that the um, uh, that the battery pack uh, is well secured in there and then I like to go around all four borders and have enough on the inside so that it feels stable so that it doesn't just cave in in the center. What's great about the uh, foam is that if you got it somewhere you need to reposition it a little bit you definitely have the opportunity to do that because for the first 30 minutes which is a quite a lot of working time, the foam is repositionable. So you can lift it, you can move it, and um, it's not going to tear up your cardstock. But then after 24 hours, when it's had a chance to completely cure and um, attach to the card base underneath it, it becomes a permanent bond. So really, really fabulous. Um, this truly is the world's best foam so I really really love it I as with any foam that I use I do always burnish it well too just so that it's making really secure contact with the papers underneath and it just knocks out any error that might get trapped in there and um, risk drying that uh, that adhesive so here's a final look at my card today. I am already in the holiday spirit. I hope uh, you are too. Let me know what you think of this card in the comments below. And until next time, happy crafting and have a fabulous day. Bye.